Do you want to farm mats for meld points to craft talismans so you can cry every time you don't get a wax or crit boost level 2? Well, I got just a thing to solve your problems. Welcome to my mini guide for anti Narwa LBG. Most people are already aware of LBG's and HBG's power against Narwa, but this guide is for those that have yet gotten to that point yet and don't quite know the mechanics of LBG from watching Japanese speedruns. So I'm going to cover everything for you here so even newbies that never touched gun before can farm proficiently. Like me. In over a decade, I have never touched guns in these games ever. I kind of don't like the playstyle from watching, I kind of prefer bow, but these were my LBG stats before making my build after 150 hours of play in Rise. Exactly. Zero. Yet, despite that, I got a sub 6 solo with my build, with less than 5 uses of the weapon total. So that's insane. So if you're ready to begin and kill Narma fast like me, and probably faster because I suck, then build a Stato! Before you begin with the builds, I'm gonna cover LBG real quick for the new players. ZL to aim. ZR to shoot. Pretty simple. You can't hold a shoot button down though, you have to press it for each ammo shot, which is why I don't like gunning, but yeah. R1 plus A is your soak by move that moves you across the field and gives you a small attack buff. This is going to be your main maneuver move for repositioning and dodging Narwa's lasers, so use your bugs for that. X is to reload, and you'll reload automatically after you run out of ammo as well, and you can do a double dodge after each shot in case you need to move with B. Now, to make this next thing simpler, switch your action bar in the options menu to item bar. This allows you to sort through ammo with just the up and down buttons, rather than holding L1 and then sorting with X and B, which is kind of weird. So, each gun has specific ammo only they can shoot. For this case, LBG has two choices for guns against Narwa, Magnum Allo, and Narga. I'm choosing the Narga one because it'll narrow shot types down to just two, piercing level two and slicing. Narga has rapid fire on piercing 2, so you shoot really fast with enough recoil down. One last thing regarding shooting is the crosshairs. Ammo types have critical distances like bow, and you want to be in the orange range, not yellow. Otherwise, you lose damage, so make sure you have the orange with the circle in the middle of it for maximum output. Luckily for Pierce, you can be very, very far away and still be in critical, which is perfect against Narwa given her size. And yeah, that is about it for LBG. The only thing you need to know now is the item loadouts and crafting shortcuts. See, you don't have infinite ammo, and you can only carry a certain amount of ammo per hunt for guns. So, you need not just ammo, but crafting mats to craft more ammo as well, which are also limited. To make Pierce 2, for example, you need Pierce 1 ammo and gunpowder level 2. In order to make Pierce 1, you need latch berries. So for an item loadout that you should save would be like this. Latch berries, gunpowder level 2, slash berry for slicing ammo, pierce level 1 and 2, and slicing ammo. With heals and buff items and a flash bomb, which are very useful against Narwa to cancel her roars. And that's it. So save that to a different loadout and register it to your item box. So whenever you farm Narwa, you can just switch to this loadout for easy access. Now how you get ammo is easy and pretty cheap. Just go to the merchant where you can just buy level 1 pierce, level 2 pierce, gunpowder level 2, and slicing ammo. I would buy like a thousand of each to start. Considering the gold we can make in this game very easily, it shouldn't be that much of a problem. However, to get latch or slash berries, you will have to use the Argosi aside picking up some from Ima Plants in quests. And each submarine should give around 30 to 40 berries per quest to do. So that's how you get the berries. And the last step is to make a shortcut for your radial so you can craft ammo on the fly. Go to radial menu settings, quest type, and pick a blank shortcut to modify it. Hit A and pick crafting on the slot, and then search for piercing ammo in the ammo category. It'll say what you need to craft it and simply register it. When it says select amount, you want to select all so you can craft automatically the max amount you can make. And repeat this for pierce 1 and slicing. If you press ZL, you can edit which shortcut you're using, where I usually swap my normal shortcut for it and then swap back whenever I'm done farming Narwa. So, whew, those are the main mechanics to be concerned with for this hunt specifically. I thought I'd throw in a short guide for you guys in case you guys aren't aware of the mechanics, since I don't plan on ever making a full guide. But yeah, the last thing you need to do is eat food for Booster, Temper, and Marksman. All these will increase the damage of your shots. And now, you're finally ready to fight Narwa. 
Now for the build today, I do use a charm that not everyone's gonna have. Chances are you're doing armor for the first time to get a charm. So I did put together this build in Armor Set Searcher for new players that requires no charm at all. It gets the basic damage boost with Pierce Up and Recoil Down. Pierce Up is a 20% damage increase, so it's kind of mandatory. And the same goes for a Recoil Down, which allows you to shoot faster. Now once you get a generic 3-2-1 slot charm, which enables more builds in general, you can upgrade to this, getting two more attack and maxing reload speed. You lose some quality of life stuff still, but your damage should be good. Before I get into my build, quickly, bow guns have mods you can modify in the equipment box or the blacksmith. You want to equip the long barrel Tanarga for higher damage and further range. Also, for rampage skill, get attack up. Now for the Narwa fight itself, a couple of things you should know from the run in the back. When you start the fight, always flash her when she notices you to cancel her roar. She almost always does purple lasers for you to shoot her face for free with piercing 2 or slicing. Generally, slicing is the better play before she transitions to a normal position instead of being upside down. But when she's upside down and you can shoot her face, go for piercing. And now for my build here. Armor pieces on the left, stats and decos needed on the right. I know, it looks weird. It's definitely not what other people are usually running. But I find this setup to be really good. It lacks the wax, it lacks the crit boost, but with ammo up and spare shot, I find it's an overall DPS increase over those, especially if I get lucky with spare shot, which has a 20% chance not to use a bullet. Ammo up level 2 gets you 5 bullets for piercing instead of 4, as well as 4 for slicing. So one more chance to proc spare shot and less time reloading. When Narva falls with this big old prego belly sticking up, I find sometimes I don't even need to reload for the whole duration, which I think makes the DPS overall better. Do note that when you do enough damage to Narva, she'll float towards the middle of the arena, and that's when you want to wirebug to the nuclear missile launcher to drop that 2k on her butt. But yeah, anyways, I also tested attack boost 4 versus crit boost 2 with Narga's base crit and max might level 1, and the attack boost was more consistently better. The crit boost had a higher range of 9 to 18 ticks versus attack level 4's 11 to 18 hits, so crit boost level 2 didn't raise the maximum shot hit and only triggered 50% of the time, so I don't know, I think crit boost is a bit of a cap if you don't have a god charm to handle its 10 to 15% damage increase. Obviously, with Wex, it'd be more consistent, but to get crit boost, Wex, attack, piercing, recoil down, spare shot, blah 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 blah, all in one set, it seems like a tall order for many. Also, with this build, piercing shot, a lot of the times you don't hit weak spots sometimes, so you're missing damage there by going with critical boost instead of more attack. And that's not even mentioning wrap it up. I did an armor set searcher and getting pierce 3 and rapid 3, just those skills alone, is like impossible. You need a Rapid 1 or Rapid 2 charm to even get a build started with those and likely lose out on too many useful skills to be worth it. So until those decos are added in the game, I would just focus on Pierce Up with Attack or Crit Boost for now. Now I can lose ammo up on my build for Crit Boost level 2 and Attack level 5, but I tried a couple runs and I couldn't get sub 6 like I could with the ammo up. That could just mean I got lucky with the ammo up one, but yeah, I don't know, I like the ammo up version better. I also see people get aim booster level 3 too, but honestly, I don't think it's necessary. You're so agile with LBG and Narwa is so telegraphed that you don't need to be standing that far back. So maybe I'm missing the point, but I am a noob with LBG, so, so just an observation from testing it out. I don't think it's needed unless you got the free slots. And last trick regarding Narwa is the second phase when you do enough damage. The Dragonator will become active, use the Dragonator, and you stand in this spot here. It'll be raised up so you can cannon immediately and bombard her. Only one person needs to do this in multiplayer, so don't all scramble for it. But yeah, from there, alternate between piercing and slicing, hitting mainly her head, arms, and belly when exposed, and you should be Gucci. And that is my anti-Narwa LBG video. So hope this helps you guys out to farm her faster, or at least jump on the LBG bandwagon before the update goes live in the next two weeks. We'll see if she remains the best charm farm. Hopefully not, but yeah. She'll always be there for an easy peasy option for those chill days you don't really care about tryharding and in multiplayer you can enjoy the red light show. So that's it for me, check out my other build videos that's a bit more depth and knowledgeable than this one. LBG's cool, but I think personally I'll go with Bo while it's broken, at least for solo Nara runs. Question of the video, how are you liking the end game grind compared to past games? Are you guys chomping at the bit for the updates or are you still working your way through the game? 
Let me know down in the comments below. And last but not least, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more Rise Epicness.